let's take a look at some of the latest malware samples being analyzed on the internet. Ooh, look at that. Right at the top of the list, kind of an interesting one. Looks like it's going to this URL, kyleowen.top and vpn.exe, which is a Windows executable. And it's got a couple tags here for SteelC, like one of the well-known stealers, and Loader, OSKI. I'm not sure what those are, but it has a lot of these tidbits here. Action similar to stealing personal data, so certainly an info stealer downloads an executable file and there's a whole lot going on. So let's take a look. So the process is outlined here, vpn.exe, certainly malicious. Hey, start cmd.exe for self-deleting, loads dropped or rewritten executables and steals credentials from web browsers, etc., etc. Actually, it has the CFG icon, so it might have been able to pull out the config. And this is SteelC, one of those information stealers. You can see the command and control servers that it tried to reach out to, like this IP address, 171.2228, and some PHP's file to be able to communicate back and forth. Some RC4 keys for encryption, and then other strings that might be present. Look at this cmd.exe. It like stages a timeout and then deletes the file itself and all of the DLLs included. Interesting. You can see the connections down below. This is VPN trying to communicate with that uh, command and control service. Look at the connection back and forth. We might be able to go see what's going on where. Here's the text here. So it is posting, ooh, hardware identifier. Interesting. Another one given a token and then a whole file. This thing is base64 encoded. So I'm curious what that might be, but we can take a look at the server responses. They do always acknowledge with some base64 encoded string. So can we see what that is or is that gonna be encoded or encrypted with the RC4? Let's just hop into Remnux real quick to get onto the command line and let me echo that and base64 decode it. Ooh. Was that trying to upload that file, octaver.docx? It might've been stealing all the stuff that's present on the desktop. And by the way, I'm taking a look at all this within AnyRun, which is this awesome, super cool online cloud dynamic analysis sandbox where you can throw up malware and hey, have it rip through what processes happen, what is some of the behavior, what really goes on when that malware is executed. And you don't need to be, hey, sitting through Ida or Ghidra and try to statically analyze it. You can actually see it in action under the microscope. I've been taking a look inside of their public submission section where you can see where everyone has already uploaded these really cool malware samples. And not everything is gonna be detected being suspicious or as a threat, but we can actually filter on, look, I wanna look at the stuff that is known and proven to be malicious. Here's another stealer, redline code.bin, and that one is kind of interesting. Pretty easily, hey, detected as a redline with the memory, but you can see it connecting to unusual ports. And in the connection section, take a look, it's going to Russia, right? At that command and control 194.113, blah, 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 on that non-standard port. If we wanted to, we could actually go look for other redline samples or any other tag that anyone is tracking. And then we might be able to actually go see other samples doing similar stuff. It's really neat though, when it can actually track down the configuration, just like we saw for Steel C. Ooh, this one is using auto IT and that one might be interesting. Can we take a look? Redline stealer here looks like an executable that also spawns a couple of other things like command prompt, cmd.exe one more time here. Here, take a look. This executable actually spawns a couple other command prompt instances. Looks like it runs task list and probably is piping this to try to find a vast AV GUI, some other, hey, antivirus solutions to see, look, should I be under the microscope and should I try and evade and, hey, not do anything? But otherwise, let's go ahead and make a directory and then copy something here. Oh, and if at any point there's something that just isn't quite clear or doesn't make a whole lot of sense, like this weird, crazy command line, any run does have these chat GPT icons that you can click on to have it explain what's going on. You can tell, hey, this is using the copy command with slash B, but it's using a whole lot of files that include deceptive names or just try to disguise malicious ones as harmless ones, maybe to evade detection or trick users into executing them. So they have some odd names in here, maybe uh, exploiting the user's curiosity or shock value value. Ultimately running exceed.pif, which is another executable and does similar stuff, probably the same exact process previously. Ultimately it runs jsc.exe, which is something. Hey, pull down in the temporary directory. Maybe that was just kind of dropped, but it is of course redline at that point. It steals credentials. It looks for other information that it might be able to pull back and tries to connect to a command and control server here. You can actually pull out the configuration file. Look at this, botnet is Uber, the C2 and its IP address here, and then a couple interesting strings. 
Redline Stealer is a malicious program that collects users' confidential data from browsers, systems, installed software. It also infects operating systems with other malware. You could actually dig into it, take a look at the more info, and you could see what it tries to steal. Like, let's go see Reed's browser cookies, right? Trying to hit Firefox. That's it. What else do we have? Let's remove our Redline Stealer and let's go back to filter on malicious here. Oh, here's WannaCry. Look at this. Uh, ransomware, WannaCry, WannaCryptor. Ooh, yeah, that one looks pretty bad. That one looks like WannaCry. Looks like the executable ultimately probably runs a trib. I think plus H is hidden, marking the current directory, the period hidden, granting everyone to have full control over it, and then staging a couple batch scripts and Visual Basic scripts. Uh, we can actually take a look at those and then actually see what it might do, but it's probably gonna stage that wannadecryptor.exe, which is like the usual pop-up for WannaCry. If we actually go take a look at the files here, and <laughs> there's gonna be a lot because it's ransomware and it has just tried to encrypt, manipulate every single file on the file system. But hey, we could search for that dot bat script. And here's one, let's go take a look. Contents here, we could pull this thing up. Looks like it is just going to stage the m.vbs file that it runs next. Ultimately, hey, just setting up some of the shell objects so that we could fire up the shortcut for wanted decryptor, save it, and then run it, and then remove it. This is a WSH rat sample, one that's ran with that .js or JScript extension, uh, invoked by wscript.exe or cscript. And there are a lot of these that use like, hey, Windows living off the land binaries for scripting languages that it could invoke. And this does a whole lot of stuff, but one of the really cool things you can do with any run is be in an interactive sandbox. So if I wanted to, I could actually restart and run this sample and customize it to do whatever I want. Hey, because of the Pro Edition, some of the features and functionality that I have, I can kick this into Windows 10, Windows 11, Windows 8, whatever, and set some of the applications that I might wanna have installed and accessible in that environment. I can choose where I want this to actually start from, and even if I don't wanna run that sample itself, I could specify, hey, just fire up cmd.exe, don't kickstart the sample yet, because I wanna be able to play with the environment and tinker with it. We'll give a little bit more time for me to use this and then I could fire this up. Because what I wanna showcase is when you're using this interactive sandbox, you can kind of manipulate or modify the environment, change some of the configuration settings so that maybe the malware behaves differently. Like say, hey, we actually don't want to run this wscript.exe that will fire and invoke the payload here. But what if I configured this, maybe it was doing some defense evasion or anything else, in this case specifically, I could probably modify something in the registry. Cause this is kind of an old but gold technique, but obviously a lot of those scripting language payloads, like again, wscript or cscript.exe, well, by default, they will naturally execute with those interpreters, but they're just plain text. They're just script files. So we could actually just toggle them to be ran with notepad. So if a user, a poor innocent victim were to double click on or execute that file, it'll just open it in notepad and not actually execute it. Uh, the comments here get into some other really cool stuff, whether you're gonna modify this with group policy or just change a couple of these settings in the registry. One of the like surefire way to actually just toggle these off is to straight up disable the Windows script host. Uh, set enabled to zero, but maybe that's a little bit too much nuke and pave. Look, if you wanna be a little bit more, I don't know, trusting, you could uh, actually just change the trust policy to say, look, only scripts signed by a tr trusted publisher are allowed to run, others are not. Uh, for our showcase, look, we'll just disable it. We'll turn this off. Again, HK local machine or HK current user. Current user will take priority. So we can at least, hey, maybe manipulate this. So rather than the payload firing, we won't won't actually see that in action. So I can go back over to the interactive sandbox and I'll actually go into that H key local machine hive. We'll go into that software section. And if I drill down into Microsoft, we should have some entries for the Windows script host. I see it there. Now I can go ahead and actually explore this in the settings here. Let's create a new string value. So that reg SZ type, and we'll set that enabled entry, toggle that and make that sure that is zero. I'll hit okay to enter that. And now if I try to double click or run our little W script payload for this WSH rat J script file, now I'll just get the error. 
hey, the Windows script host is not available. It is currently disabled on the system and it won't fire the malicious payload. That is some of the benefits of, hey, being able to tinker and explore inside of the any run sandbox. Because look, if there's any defense evasion techniques, maybe some files or configurations or settings you could tweak, hey, you have an interactive environment to be able to play with that. This one looks like just a PowerShell script, MP as desk. So PowerShell will go ahead and execute this. And let's go see. Oh, it tries to downgrade itself to like probably version two, avoid like CLM, constrained language mode. If we dig into more info, we could see what it does, or we could just probably read the script. Here, this is being added into uh, jump lists for Windows history, custom destinations. You can see it kind of staged this here. Can we see this specific file though? I want to check out what that PowerShell script was. We could very easily just get the sample, right? That's one of the beauty and benefit of any run. Hey, we can pull these down. We can fire this up in Remnux if we wanted to. Let me open up the terminal. Let me make a directory for PowerShell. There we go. I'll get it inside the virtual machine and let me go ahead and extract that. I'll unzip that with the password infected. Let's take a look at what that script is. Oh, a little cutesy. Hey, actually like abstractly getting the C Sharp compiler, adding some reference assemblies so it doesn't need to be present in like some of the C Sharp code it might try to run or execute, and then some other compiler parameters. That's kind of cool. Let me turn word wrap on so we can see that a little bit better. There's the giant dump of all the uh, maybe inline C sharp it wants to run here. And yeah, passes it to the ASP.NET compiler, uh, invokes and runs it with reflection. That one's neat. Oh, this looks like a macro enabled uh, Word document or Office document. This is a macros on open as a tag here. Can any run track this down? Oh yeah, hey, firing up macro settings, trying to let this thing fire. Looks like PowerShell.exe, capital L's get spawned and then reaches out to some shady places. Maybe a compromised WordPress website. You can see the WP includes in here. The content gets pulled down. It is a 404 though, but is it lying to us? No, it doesn't look like there's anything there. Then it goes out to another location and actually maybe pulls something down. Another 404. We can see this PowerShell though, this base 64 encoded command. This one might be kind of neat to see some of like the MITRE attack techniques because it probably is going to showcase, look, for some of these specific techniques or tactics that it gets into, you can read and learn a little bit more about what it did there and how MITRE categorizes this. And then if you wanted to, look, that's super duper helpful for your report. And you could go see some other resources and references to learn a little bit more about that, even to MITRE itself. Look, here's another uh, Excel file. This is another Microsoft Office document. And this one looks kind of wild. Hey, they use excel.exe and then some macros are included here. They'll end up using a lot of shady stuff on the command line. <laughs> you can see it's using ping to try to add some delay and actually, hey, sleep for a little bit before moving on to maybe the next operations. I wonder what the text report will talk about for that. If you haven't seen these before, I think these are pretty neat because it will just sort of, hey, bundle up everything that it saw in the behavior of the binary or the malicious sample that you're working with. And if it can pull out the malware configuration like you saw with Redline or SteelC or some of the others, hey, pulling out some of the exit data, you can see some sketchy stuff in there. There you can see the screenshots and the behavior graph of what fired where and when. That's awesome. Any run also has this new chat GPT functionality. So I kind of want to see, hey, what is this showcase? Task involved the execution of a malicious script that was launched by Microsoft Excel. Given, hey, it's a macro enabled document, it ends up creating other scripts, other JavaScript files and working with them through the command line, even downloading other executables from remote locations. Script also makes modifications to the Windows registry, probably the internet settings and office configurations so that it actually could continue to run other macro enabled documents by disabling those security features and removes evidence of the malicious activity by trying to delete its own file. Kind of neat, that's cool. Obviously we have only scratched the surface, right? Look, I'm on page three out of 45,000 and it's so cool to see all of the public submissions and weird stuff that could be going on. Like, look at this, Emotet, there's 44 caliber DC rat. And of course you could search for whatever you really wanted to with the filter here, whether it's specific hash, maybe you're working with these indicators of compromise or what's a URL or a file. And hey, I don't know if you've got a chance to dig into some of the other super cool stuff that any run offers. Obviously, other than the dynamic interactive sandbox, you can play with it. You can do whatever the heck you want but they're always sharing some super cool research and it's literally free. Hey, you can jump in, you can join the party, you can use any run for free. They even have an API. Like you could just, hey, submit stuff from the command line or any applications you might use with your sock, or your seam, whatever.
Just like how we've been doing with all the public submissions, like we could click around, you could even see, oh, what are the trends in the new submissions or the new found malware samples out and about? Like WannaCry, Redline, NJRat, DCRat, all the stuff we were just kicking around. And if you wanna get a little bit more detail, you can always click into any of these and learn about that specific family or variant of malware, like XWorm or SteelC or any of the others that we saw that maybe we just weren't as familiar with. From there, you can see a whole lot of the other blog posts that get into one specific family, or you can see some of the other opportunities like the configurations that it could pull out, automatically extract for you, or see their process tree. Anyway, obviously there's a whole lot of malware samples out there and oftentimes they're getting analyzed by any run. You can take a look at it if you haven't used it before, link in the video description, and they actually just started up a new Discord server. So if you're part of the community, always cutting up malware samples, go take a look. I'll have a link for that in the video description as well. Thanks so much for hanging out. I hope you see you in the next video.